Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we're going to be looking at an everyday carry item, namely a knife. This comes from a company called True Utility. This is the True Blade Lightweight Pocket Knife. Alright, so a little about True Utility. I've actually reviewed quite a few of their um, gadgets. And uh, yeah, so True Utility seems to be a company that's focused on everyday carry gizmos. So, you know, little multi tools, uh, lighters, telescopic pens, flashlights. You get the idea. And all the items I've reviewed so far from them have all been what I just call the key ring line. And the reason why is because they're all meant to kind of fit on a key ring. So much so that they actually include a branded true utility key ring. It's a big one, but it's still a key ring nonetheless. So this is the first one of their items that I've got that is not that size. So you notice the key ring now is absent, obviously, because this is too big to be put on a key ring. Um, at least comfortably and so yeah it seems I moved up to the next size or line of their products so I'm just gonna call it the pocket series and what else oh availability yeah I actually went here um, in the States and just went to a store and picked it up and bought it and checked out and left so um, your availability you can get it that way at least or you probably order it online but anyway you don't have to import it okay so with all that out of the way oh you probably want to know about price well, All right, so here's an up-close look at the front. You've kind of already seen this, but uh, now you get to see it up close while still in the packaging. So you can see that highlighting the, how one hand opens, how it has the black anodized blade, and also here that blade is 420 stainless steel. Okay, and um, there's some highlights um, of the knife. Pictures, notice it does have that um, cool orange um, spine, so that's a... I think they call it a spacer, but I'm going to call it a spine. It looks cool and orange. Okay, and um, just down here is just that California warning because, you know, everything in the world causes cancer. Okay. All right, so on the back, they have a little blurb about the knife. And I'll hold it up, but I'll also read it so i um, make it easy on you. Okay. The True Blade is a lightweight, everyday carry pocket knife. It has a 2.5-inch, partially serrated, black oxidized, 420 stainless steel blade. The blade features a manual, one-hand opening, with a thumb stud and a liner lock to keep it safely extended. The handle is crafted from stainless steel frame with anodized aluminum scales to keep its design lightweight and minimal. There is a thumb landing to provide expert control without putting pressure on the blade. The knife is easy to carry with its stainless steel pocket clip and a perfect companion for any task. Okay, and then we have some of this, the highlights. Kind of covered this earlier and kind of was in that little blurb I just read. But there they have it out in bullet point form. Uh, let's see here. Thumb landing, we'll get back to that. It's quite obvious. Um, but we'll see that when I open it up. And there you can see they do have a um, website if you want to go there and look at this or other um, items they have for sale. And also, they apparently have a little, is that coming up? Yeah, lifetime limited warranty. So there you see their little promise to you. Okay. All right, overall impressions of the packaging. Well, it's the same as with all their items I've reviewed up to this point, and now this one too. I like the packaging. I think they do a really good job. Not only on the materials they use, but also on the um, styling and the colors. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So first of all, um, probably the best thing they did with this is the fact that it has a clear window to the item, and not just on the front, but also on the back. Not a lot of other um, manufacturers do that. Usually they'll have a clear front, and the back is a solid card and you can't see the back of the knife. You just kind of have to you know, look at the pictures or maybe assume if they don't even have pictures. So this, you get to see it both sides. Uh, I caught that, good job. All right, now the other thing is, this is kind of more on their styling, but they have the, the orange and the black, which seems to be kind of like their trademark colors. But I think it works really well because orange and black, at least to me, and I think a lot of other people, it kind of gives you that whole kind of construction, uh, you know, road work. So you're, it's a detention grabber. And also looking at the type of the materials or the type of item they're selling, it is kind of a utility um, type focus. I mean, if you were doing it for like bed sheets or something, it might not make a lot of sense. But here, yeah, knives, lighters, whatever, multi-tools, yeah, get things done. So I think that's a good, um, kind of gets you in the vibe. And talking about vibes, uh, this little cut here and that little cut down there in the packaging, 
Now, they may have their own reason for doing that, but I think it's actually more of a subconscious thing they're trying to do. And what I mean by that is, think about it. You see this, you, your brain basically tries to make this a full rectangle, but immediately it knows there's a cut there and a cut there missing. So you're already thinking, cut, 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 and you're selling a knife, right? So, yeah. so okay, okay, subtle, but I see what you're doing there. That's pretty clever. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, packaging's great. So let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. So in order to open it, I took a pair of scissors, I cut in from the side here, cut all the way up along here, of course the clear part, right underneath the blade, and then after that, I dropped one of my scissors down here, got it in between these two layers of cardboard, and then slit down. If all that worked, I should be able to take it out of here without too much problems, and without cutting my finger on the plastic. So let's see how successful I was. Not bad. Also keep in mind, of course, the knife blade is open, so taking it out, you want to use a little bit of caution. And there we go. Got it out. And to give you an idea of that orange, because I know it's blending in with that door, let me get a white background real quick. There you go. Now you can see the orange. Get some light on it. There you go. Alright, so here it is in the closed position. So, earlier I was talking about how it has a unique shape, and I think you can see that now. So, this portion here, um, the thumb landing, or the thumb rest, whatever you want to call it, is very pronounced, um, even when, when the blade's closed, or you could probably say especially when the blade's closed, you notice it. Let me um, see if I can get a point of balance on this thing. Center of gravity. That's close. It's about right here. There you are. So, kind of the base where you see the writing on the blade. That's pretty much your center of balance. Let me roll this towards you so you can see where that is in relationship to the length of the knife. All right? With the pocket clip. Star bolt there. Um, what's this here? Wow. Okay, this pocket clip is. I mean, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating here. This thing, I'm really having to lift this up. I mean, they. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose it's better it starts off like this, um, than be way too wide and have it slip off your pocket and fall onto the ground and you lose it. So as it stands now, you, whatever you clip this to, it's going to stay attached. Um, you'll have to work this thing in. Um, but, like, again, at least you're not going to lose your knife. Now, coming down here, so let's look at this. So, okay, this, obviously the hinge for the blade, so that that's self-explanatory. But down here, this, I mean, I guess I, I, I mean, it's holding the knife together. But I suppose it's kind of like a balance, as far as like a visual balance, this side and this side. But, yeah, obviously there's no hinge here. Nothing happens back here. This is just holding the knife together. And, um, yeah, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm starting to like the design more. When I first looked at it, I'm like, what the heck? But now it's actually kind of growing on me a little. Um, it's, as you can tell, it's not symmetrical side to side as far as the design here the blades a little more encased because you have this <laughs> this raised bar here which even this is even stylized with these um actually these are little indents here so I, 
mean, I don't really know how much grip they give, but they definitely give it a little more style than it just being a flat um, skeletal bar there. But anyway, so you can see this side and this side are unique from one another. So, you know, there's a lot of style going on here. If it's your taste, maybe, maybe not, but it's not plain Jane, that's for sure. Especially not with this uh, orange here. But let's look at the, um, let's go ahead and see how easy this is to open here. So let me resume. Alright, so here's your thumb stud. Note it does not have a flipper, uh, or if you don't know what that is, basically a peg that sticks out this side, which you can just pull down, and then that causes the knife to swing open. This does not have one of those. Um, I don't know if that was lost in, in order to get this uh, thumb landing here, but I mean, I suppose you could still have the... Anyway, whatever. There is no um, flipper uh, bar, so you're going to have to use a thumb stud. So let's see how easy that is. They say it's a one-hand opener, right? Okay, so it's definitely doable. You just saw me do it. But there is no spring assist. Um, you might see that as a plus or a minus. Minus if you want it to be super easy, obviously, because you don't have that spring basically opening it almost all on its own. However, for legal reasons, depending on where you live, it might be a plus that this does not have that spring assist. But again, to open it, thumb stud, yeah. So for me, you can either do it in one, if you have the dexterity to swing your thumb all the way around to open, or you can do like what I just did there, kind of a two-step. First you pop it open and then complete it, so it's kind of a one-two, but it's still pretty quick. Now let's look at that um, lock, liner lock there. Okay, this is a good sign. Uh, the liner lock is going um, to the, like basically dead center, actually even a little past dead center on the blade, which is good because that means it's going to hold the blade open. Some knives, not the not so good knives, these don't always spring all the way into action. They kind of just move a little bit, and then that can cause obviously the blade to collapse back in on itself when you apply any pressure. So this out of the box doing this is a good sign. Well, we have this open. You get a good uh, look at that spine that's colored on the inside as well. Not just the back, but it's actually colored on the inside too, so it really gives it yeah, more uh, more flavor. So let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in here. So you get to see all the layers here. So the grayish black is, is obviously the aluminum. Um, so they call it scales but whatever you want to call it, plate, side panel, <laughs> whatever. So that black, the, so the outermost layer is the aluminum, then you have the stainless steel liner, which is basically the frame. Of course, this lock is part of that frame as well. And then on the other side, of course, it repeats going the other direction. And then there you have your blade. Well, might as well look at that blade now that we're right here. So there's your blade. Serrations, I'd say, are about what, maybe 40% the length, maybe like 33% or whatever. But yeah, so it's more blade than serration. There you have the local. And there's the tip. Actually, I kind of like the tip design. Overall, it's more pointy <laughs> than um, some some this well you know they're all different type of blade shapes but I think this one's a pretty good balance actually it's a pretty good profile and then there's your um, using the thumb landing rest thing so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually pushing my thumb pushing the thumb into this and yeah you can actually get a good grip on it with putting all that force down so all right, so I went ahead and measured it. It ends up coming up to be 91 grams. So in order to give you, I guess, an idea what 91 grams is, if you're trying to imagine it, it's almost five empty pop cans. So, I know, crazy unit to measure, right? Whatever, that's what I had, so. All right, so it is a knife and it's meant to cut things. So let's go ahead and see just how sharp it is when it comes out of the packaging. 
So um, we got a piece of paper here. This is about half of an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So your standard printer paper, whatever, right? Nothing special, not extra thick, not laminate, not super glossy, but whatever. Your bulk printer paper. And what I'm going to do here is two cuts. The first cut, or two types of cuts. The first cut is I'm going to try to shave off um, some the top. Of course, that would be if this is really, really sharp, it can do that. But really, only the sharper knives can do that. So, not sure if it'll do that or not. But the second um, test will be where I actually stab into the paper and then cut out. And of course, that obviously um, doesn't require as sharp of a knife. So let's go ahead and start here. Knife open. And oh yeah, I'm just going to free hold it. I'm not going to pull it taut, right? So yet again, that's going to demand more sharpness from the knife in order to perform this, right, successfully. So here we go. Try to keep it so you can see it here. All right, here we are, cutting. Okay, so you can see there's a little here. Um, again, I really wasn't expecting to be able to do that. But, all right, so now we'll do the easier of the two tests, stab in, cut out. So here we are. Again, free holding it. I'm not pulling it taut. Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Um, you yeah, had to give it kind of a jab there, but... All right, now I'm pulling through. All right, let's see if we can do a little better. Make sure not to cut myself. Again. Hmm. All right. You had to put a little oomph into that just to get it to go through the paper. All right, anyway, let's go cut out. That was on me, so back in, cutting out. All right, so you can see there, it's not the cleanest of cuts. Kind of on the fuzzy side, which obviously means not a clean cut, but rather more of a tearing than a cutting. I mean, overall, it's still a cut, obviously, but it's not as clean as you'd want. So... It looks like these knives um, need a little bit of, this knife needs a little bit of sharpening. Now, I'm going to go ahead and test it for sharpness. Again, not going to hurt myself, not putting hardly any pressure, so this isn't dangerous. But still, I wouldn't recommend you doing this unless you have a good idea of what you're doing, because you could always cut yourself. But of course, that won't happen here, because I'm being extremely careful. Okay. So, what's happening here is that there's de there's an edge. I mean, you can see it there right on camera, the shiny part. Um, yeah, but it's not all that sharp. So, it's almost like they gave you an edge and you need to go ahead and sharpen it. So, I'm going to use a very simple sharpener. I'm nothing fancy. We're not going to break out all different kinds of sticks and ceramics and all that. I'm just going to go get use a simple v-notch that most anybody might have in their kitchen all right so i did some sharpening actually a little more sharpening than that i wanted to do um, but again still just using basic quick sharpeners that you would have like in your backpack or your fishing box or whatever like that so nothing fancy really um so you can see there <laughs> so yeah i've been you see it yeah so i've been doing a little sharpening and even then like i said it's a little more than i should have had to anyway enough said we're not even going to do the shave test because I can tell you this right now, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so we got another blank piece of paper, another half sheet of printer paper, and uh, we'll do the stab in and cut over, hopefully, right? Okay, I didn't really do the point because I was kind of impatient. So, um, so yeah, okay, we'll start really from here. So it's in the paper and cutting across. Zooming. Yeah, that's just bad. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to get another piece of paper right here, and I'm going to bring out another knife. All right, so here I have one of my EDC knives. This one is quite a heavy, heavy guy. You can see there's no weight-saving cuts in here. This is just solid chunk. 
And um, yeah, so I had this imported, and so anyway, um, we're going. But the one thing I can tell you about this is I didn't have to do any sharpening on this. It's just the way it came. Okay, so obviously a lot easier to open than the other knife. So and then we're going to do the same test, cutting it over. Okay, so there we go. And um, yeah, you zooming in. Yeah, that's more how it should look. You don't see all those fuzzies. A little side by side there. You can already tell what side's which. I don't even need to say anything. <laughs> All right, do a little more sharpening. Let's try this again. So much better. Yeah. All right. So we're getting there. All right. So as you saw from that last cut, I'm making progress on getting this knife sharp, but I am having to put in the effort. So, but now that at least it cut somewhat decent, um, I'll go ahead and carry it for a few days and see how I like it. So uh, one other thing I was just noticing about the knife, as far as the ergonomics due to this um, interesting shape where it's narrow at the bottom and kind of well, at wide at the top is that it does seem to fall in your hand pretty naturally because kind of like a nail I guess uh, it kind of pushes the narrowness goes into your hand and the weight on top kind of pushes in straight so if you just lightly open up your grip it just kind of naturally sinks in there so that's kind of cool all right, so I carried this knife around a bit, and I want to show you a few other things that I probably didn't cover yet. First, I want to talk about the color. I'm not sure if it's coming up accurate on video here, but these aluminum side panels, so this here and, of course, the one on the other side, they are actually not just black or gray or however it might be coming up on video, but, in fact, they're actually kind of a grayish green. So you have black, green, and then you have this cool orange on the back. So all together, these colors work really well together. Okay, so now um, the next thing. I realize I have not showed you an overall profile of the knife when it's extended. So let's fix that right now. So here it is fully extended. I'll try to keep my fingers out as much as possible. And there you can see. So the knife has kind of an arcing profile. And it's even more exa uh, exaggerated because of this cutout here. So it really gives you the, it goes up and then it kind of starts to dive back down again. So that's the overall profile of the knife. And now let's get to the um, a disclaimer. And a disclaimer in this case is um, regarding my use of this item. And that is to say that I've used this item for basically just as much to make this video. So what you saw here on this video plus me uh, one or two days of me carrying it around. That's my total use with this knife. And so therefore, I can't tell you just how long it will last if you use and abuse it. However, I can tell you it does feel to be pretty tightly um, put together. I have been flicking open the blade and closing it, flicking it open and closing it, kind of as a fidget type deal. So I have opened and closed it a lot, and it doesn't seem to be getting loose or anything, or, and it's not rattling. So, yeah, all right. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so we've arrived at the end of the video where I go over, in my conclusion, the question of would I recommend this um, item? And the answer to that is it depends. And now if you're thinking, oh, he dodged the question, it depends. Uh, how cliche. Well, let me go into why and where that it depends comes from. All right? So earlier in the video, you recall that I said that all the items that I've reviewed from true utility were all the keychain sized items, right? So those items are not only well built, but they are very helpful and the um, form factor allowed them to literally fit on a keychain. So because of all that, they had a, they were pretty much in a field of their own. Um, I know there are other brands, but really true utility pretty much had it covered and they had a wide selection. So that was kind of my go-to for gadgets of that size. Now this, however, is out of that keychain size and now we're into pocket knife regular pocket knife size and now this brand in for this item has a lots of competition okay by some very well known names and that well I'll just say it can make better knives okay so 
this knife here, I would say if you're looking for something like this, but basically better, um, go with the Gerber Evo Junior. It essentially, you can get it with the same kind of black um, coating on the blade. The blade also has that, you know, half um, blade, half serration. And the it also is ported on the side, so it is lightweight. But that knife, unlike this knife, has a couple things going for it um, as a plus over this. First of all, it cuts right out of the box. So, yes, you can take it out and start using it right away. No need to go sharpen it like I had to do with this one. Second, um, instead of having this landing here, this big, like, hunch on the back, it actually has a flipper bar. So you can, with just one finger, flip open the knife. So kind of like you saw me do with that other knife I had earlier. Um, that was not an Evo Junior, but it opens in the same way. So... The Evo Junior opens faster, it's sharper out of the box, and yeah, so, and that's just one knife I picked out that I think fits right along the lines of size and function is some, similar to this, but I'm sure you can go name a whole list of other knives that you would um, prefer or you would recommend. So because of that, this knife is really in a, um, heavy competition, and with its performance out of the box, it's just, it, it can't hang with those other brands. And... I like the styling, but let's face it, a knife is a tool, and at the end of the day, it needs to cut as well as just looking good. So this one, I just can't recommend it against others. Now, however, if you are a big fan of True Utility and you want everything that they make, including the knife, you can sharpen this up to get it to where it cuts well. And again, there's nothing really wrong with this knife. So in that case, I'd say, yeah, I could recommend it then. But for straight utility, I get it utility, um, I would go ahead and get a different brand knife. 